One nutrient that you may or may not have been thinking about lately on your farm is sulfur. And the reason why this has gotten so much more popular in the last few years to talk about is number one, we don't have nearly the air pollution that we used to. Clean air means you've got to fertilize with sulfur because that sulfur isn't falling from the sky anymore. And the other thing is with higher yields in any crop, it's not just corn and the grass crops, but all crops, even soybeans, they need a fair amount of sulfur. So if you're going to raise more crop and you have less air pollution, you've got to apply sulfur to your farm if you want top yields. Well, here's the other thing too. We oftentimes talk about nutrients that are going to stay in your soil, like phosphorus, yep. potassium. They pretty much stay where they're put in most soils. Until you use them up. Yeah, until you use them up. Sulfur is one that can actually leach. Now that means that sulfur can move down through the soil profile with water. So especially if you have lighter soils, this is a real concern. Uh, but really in any soil, it can move just kind of like nitrogen does. So we want to be cautious when we're talking about sulfur. It's going to be one of those nutrients we need to apply pretty much every year to about every crop we're going to raise. We're going to need some level of sulfur and we need to do good soil testing to monitor how much is out there. And then we also need to think about how much that crop's going to remove and how much we need to apply each season. Okay, one other thing that Darren hasn't mentioned yet is you've got some free sulfur in your soil that comes available every year. Here's how. When organic matter breaks down through the process of mineralization, it's going to release some sulfur for you. So the numbers would say two to three pounds of sulfur for every 1% of organic matter. So if I've got 5% organic matter soil, I'm going to get 10 to 15 pounds of sulfur for free every year. That's a good deal. And you've got to factor that in when you start looking at how much do I already have available? How much do I really need? If I've got 10 or 15 pounds coming available, and let's say the crop I'm raising only needs eight pounds, I'm probably in pretty good shape, so I might not have to apply sulfur every year. This is why it's so important to understand soil tests, and unfortunately a lot of people, even a lot of people making soil recommendations, fertility recommendations, don't realize, oh yeah, organic matter has sulfur that's going to come available for your crop. So we're just trying to tell you, get smarter on this fertility thing, and it might save you a bunch of money on your farm. All right, well, let's talk about that education a little bit. I am really happy that every farmer I talk to completely understands my crop needs N, P, and K. I have to have good amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, or I'm not gonna have a decent crop. What we kind of forget though, when we focus on those big three things, is there's a lot of other nutrients out there, whether it's something like sulfur or calcium or magnesium, secondary nutrients, or even micronutrients. So we have to look at those other things as well. Now, when we get into a year like this year where fertilizer prices are pretty high, crop prices have come down quite a bit. I know there's a tendency for people, and I know we talk about it on our own farm too, is man, I don't know if I can afford to put on the full shot of fertilizer. I may need to trim it back a little bit this year in order to, to maintain some profitability on my farm. When I look at some of these nutrients, like a sulfur, that we really don't need all that much, I just don't want to short myself on things that, you know, it's not that expensive to meet my sulfur needs already. As Brian was mentioning, we've got quite a bit of sulfur that does come for free in our soils. Maybe we only need to be applying 10 pounds or 20 pounds. You could get that kind of for free, like in a product like ammonium sulfate, for example, or ammonium thiosulfate. Well, it's not really maybe for free because know, it's gonna cost more to go that way than yeah, to apply straight but nitrogen, but here's his point. There is some sulfur in some of the fertilizers you may consider using. Right, absolutely, farm. and there are a lot of different ways you can get that sulfur out there. It could be ammonium sulfate, it could be gypsum, it could be ammonium thiosulfate, it could be manure. Uh, there are lots of products that have some level of sulfur in there, so you gotta take a look at that. And then also keep in mind, you know, we talk a lot about banding fertilizer and it's much more efficient. Well, that's for P and K and zinc, the things that don't move in soil. When we're talking about nitrogen and sulfur, they move enough in soil with water that banding doesn't give you the same efficiency over no, broadcasting than does. There's nothing wrong with banding. Don't, no, don't but, think we're saying no, but that. The, the point is you can put this sulfur on just about any way you want, and as long as you have some rainfall, you're going to move that down into the root zone. Okay. So for example, maybe you're doing your burn down application in the spring. I know a lot of guys who like to add some sulfur into the burn down application because it, it heats up. it up. Yeah. So you get a little bit better weed control. Hey, one other thing I was just thinking about is we apply a bunch of lime on our farm just about every year. Guess what? The lime we use has some sulfur in there too. So make sure you're looking at all the forms of sulfur because you don't need to invest a bunch of money in a sulfur application when you've already put it on, maybe even inadvertently, on your farm. Well, it's certainly a lot of functions that sulfur serves in the plant. It is absolutely critical that your crop has enough sulfur. The other thing that's critical for a successful crop is getting great weed control. We'll show you how to stop a very tough perennial weed 
and today's Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.